Hey guys, it's Derek here. Today we're going to be taking a look at my very first unlicensed statue, the Elex Studio Vegeta. Let's see if he's a short king or not. The unboxing experience wasn't too extravagant or anything. It was just okay. Kind of mid, in fact. All the pieces are nicely wrapped up in some plastic baggies, but they also included a bit of polyfill to protect the heads and some other important pieces. Luckily for me, Vegeta came fully intact. No breaks, no damage, nothing. He was basically perfect. He was originally released back in March 2020 and retailed for about $489 American. His shipping cost $120 through Surface Parcel, and it arrived on my doorstep in about three months. So all that considered, it's not that bad. Measuring in at 55 centimeters tall or 21.6 inches, he's quite big for a quarter scale, but most of it is made up from his hair and that massive base. So compared to other quarter scales I have, yeah, he's, he's a bit bigger. This is unit 110 of 288. However, there is an INT on the bottom of here too, making me wonder if there's a Chinese or a different version as well. This might just be the international version. So let me ask you guys a question. How many of you have made IKEA furniture before? Without the instructions. <laughs> Never done it before? He, he doesn't have one either. No instructions. It's not impossible, but it is difficult because there's a lot of different pieces on here, like the key coming out and also the electricity that's everywhere. And there's nothing to indicate which one goes where. All we get is the images on the front of the box, the three that are on there to help you out. Otherwise, you'll have to go online to kind of look at different images and kind of zoom in and enhance. Maybe a, a slight, slight oversight. Surprisingly, the main base does have some LED functionality, albeit it is a little bit weak because they decided to put a giant light source in the middle inside the base and made holes everywhere else where the key comes out, meaning that the light isn't evenly distributed and there's a few bigger pieces that don't get any shine at all, or very little. You can easily access one of the three lighting modes in the back. You have a choice between solid, flickering, and breathing. I don't know if you guys notice this or not, but there's a micro USB port on there to charge it. They do include a USB cable for it, but they don't give you a charging block, so you have to source that yourself. And yeah, it's 2022. I don't know why you're using micro USB. But let's move on to a few positives. Alex Studio did manage to give us a ton of extras. You get three swappable heads, a bust that you can put one of the heads on, and also a gray head holder thing. You can also light up the Vegeta bust in the back with a small little switch, but again, they've added the micro USB port, but they only gave you one cable. So you gotta source this one yourself along with the power supply. Personally, I love the look of base form Vegeta with his scouter and his black hair. Very arrogant look to him as well. It's kind of unfortunate because it doesn't really match up with the rest of what's going on with the base and the statue here because we have SS2 or Super Saiyan 2 electricity coming off of him and yellow Super Saiyan key. So he's a bit out of place. Also displaying just this head with this gray collar, yeah, and no, I'm good. Difficult assembly and questionable add-ons aside, I really like how he turned out. Honestly, if you were to tell me that this was a fully licensed statue and worth more than $1,000, I would believe you. There's definitely a commanding presence with this statue. He'll draw in your attention the moment you look in his direction. LX Studio managed to load a ton of astonishing detail into this statue. Between the intricate base with exploding key, the discharging electricity, and his perfectly sculpted muscles. We are blessed with the design that not only stays true to the original source material, but also goes even further beyond with a few innovative nuggets. Every piece of his battle armor has a distinct molded texture. Leather for his boots and gloves, a hexagonal pattern on his jumpsuit, and a ton of damage on his main chest piece. They really didn't hold back. All three of the head sculpts are spot on and perfectly represent his personality during each stage of his life. The Saiyan Saga, Android Saga, 
and turn him into power. If I actually had to grade the paint job, I'd give it a perfect 10 out of 10. I've never seen a paint job this well done before, not even on my fully licensed One Piece statues. This is actually just amazing. There's phenomenal airbrush shading and highlights all throughout, especially on areas like the wrinkles. All the recessed areas have a bit of a weathering wash or a little bit of inking, and they even added a bit of dry brushing. This is truly a masterclass when it comes to paint, and I would love to add a few more of these from LX Studios into my collection. Of course, knowing me, I still found a few little faults, some that I've already spoken about and some that I haven't, but if I were to change up a few things, I got four points or four things I would love addressed from LX Studios, so please take notes and improve your product. Number one, I would love if you included another nameplate in the very front. Instead of just Dragon Ball Super, maybe have Dragon Ball Z and have it magnetized so we can swap it in and out. That way it's not so strange when we have the Super Saiyan Blue Head and all the other parts that are on there. Speaking of the Super Saiyan Blue Head though, number two, I'd recommend actually including some more key. Maybe some blue key? to represent what's happening here with Super Saiyan Blue. Personally, I really do like the blue head the most. It's actually my favorite head. Beautiful head sculpt, the paint looks great, and he's less arrogant and a little more angry, trying to you know protect the universe and everything. I really like this one, but putting him on there with all the strange or yellow key, kind of awkward. Please throw in some blue and this would look a lot better. Number three, USB-C, please? I know you're trying to save a little bit here and there, but USB-C just makes things a lot easier. I know some people that don't really have micro cables anymore. And finally, number four, include an instruction manual. It will greatly improve the user experience and make all your customers a lot happier. Even if they're not great quality and kind of like the Jimmy ones that I have, at least the pictures help like a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So should you guys buy from an unlicensed studio? Definitely, maybe? I would say that this is kind of like the exception, not the norm. I have seen or heard a lot of horror stories in the past, so it might go from studio to studio. So you might want to do a bit of research online, like Facebook groups, Discord channels and everything. You'll be able to find out whether or not that studio has a good track record of delivering things without breaking them because of packaging and whatnot, and also the overall quality. Luckily for me, LX Studio seems to be really good, and I will definitely be picking up more from their Dragon Ball Z line in the future whenever they have a Goku or a future Trunks. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please consider giving it a like and let me know in the comments down below what kind of experiences you guys have had with unlicensed statues or even licensed ones. Let me know. I'm kind of curious. Of course, I'll leave another video over here if you've missed out on something recently. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave something over there that you guys can go check out. My name is Derek. And my debt is over 9,000. Bye, guys.